In this video, we shall go through these six documents. How to install YARBASIC under Windows. How to install YARBASIC under Mac. How to write your own programs. A crash course in YARBASIC Part 1. A crash course in YARBASIC Part 2. And suggested projects and descriptions. All of these documents can be obtained from the web address given below. How to install YARBASIC under Windows. This page first explains how you can download and install YARBASIC on a Windows-based operating system. Then how to run YARBASIC programs under Windows. And finally, some tips when editing and running YAR basic programs under Windows. We shall go through this page in much greater detail in the video Getting Started with YAR basic. How to install YAR basic under Mac. This page explains how you can install YAR basic natively on your MacBook, where native means installed just like any other software and not something web-based. This does involve quite a few steps. Moreover, steps with which most Mac users are quite unfamiliar. But if you can get it working, it does work very well. How to write your own programs. This contains some general advice on how to write your own programs. If you are doing one of the projects which only involves modifying a program from the crash course, then maybe you do not need this. But if you're going to tackle one of the harder projects, which involve writing a lot of your own code, then you should definitely give this a read. Next, let's look at the crash course in YAR Basic Part 1. As you can see, every page follows the same regular structure. So let's take a closer look at the first page to see what this structure is. <clears throat> the top panel is a program which you should type into a new .yab file and name according to the instructions. Example, prog11a.yab. Please do stick to the naming conventions as this makes your work much, much easier to read. The bottom panel consists of some tasks which you should work through. Then the middle panel is a summary table of the key concepts and new commands which you will have learnt while you were doing the tasks. So you should work through this in the order top, bottom, middle. Note, however, that the first page is a sampler of the rest of part one. So if, while working through the tasks on this first page, you find yourself asking lots of questions, this is good, but all of the answers will be supplied in the following five pages. So don't stop, keep going. Finally, let's take a closer look at the last two pages. The last two pages are more challenging and are marked with an asterisk. These pages are optional <coughs> and you can skip over them at first. Maybe come back to them later if your project requires them. Part 2 of the crash course, which also has six pages, has an almost identical structure. So again, let's look at the first page. This has a top panel, a program which you should type into a new .yab file and named according to the instructions, e.g. prog21a.yab. Please do stick to the naming instructions as this makes your work much, much easier to read. Then the bottom panel, some tasks which you should work through. And then the middle panel, a summary table of key concepts and new commands which you will have learnt while you were doing the tasks. 
So again, you should work through this in the order top, bottom, middle. Again, the first page is a sampler of the rest of part two. So if while working through the tasks on the first page, you find yourself asking lots of questions, this is good, but all the answers will be supplied in the following five pages. So don't stop, keep going. Now the last two pages are more challenging and are marked with an asterisk. These pages again are optional. You can skip over them at first, maybe come back to them later if your project requires them. Next, let's take a look at the fourth document, Suggested Projects and Descriptions, .pdf. The first page consists of a list of suggested projects, while the other nine pages consist of the detailed project descriptions. Now, each of these nine pages has an identical structure, and to see what the structure is, let's take a closer look at, say, Project 6. This begins with a starter program, which you should type and run. Then the project is divided into three phases. Phase 1, which sets up the core functionality. Phase 2, which expands that core functionality to produce a comprehensive program. And Phase 3, which optionally includes some more advanced features. Finally, let's look at the bottom of the first page. You're welcome to come up with a project of your own. And here are some which have worked well in the past. But check with your instructor first to make sure that your idea is suitable. And do try to follow the same phase one, phase two, phase three structures as for the other projects.